button is pressed. Thank you, Sean. Pleasure. Welcome everyone to May 3rd. It is Tuesday. You're here with Chaos Community, the rest of your fellow Chaotics. We're so happy to see you today. Welcome, welcome. Um, yeah, I hope everybody's doing good. I ran out of coffee this morning. So I'm, I'm on decaf, which I don't do. Yes, so. yeah, well, it's, I don't understand why they ever made that. Why even <laughs> it's just, it's, it's like so I funny. might. <laughs> it is just like a tease. Cause I'm like, oh yeah, it tastes like coffee. And yet I'm about to fall asleep. So yeah, where's the kick? <laughs> That's right, I need a kick <laughs> in more ways than one. Okay. Yeah. Um, hey everyone, did you see the minutes? I'll put them in here. If you would like to, you can add your name to the list of attendees. Uh, I'm Elizabeth, by the way, I am your chaos community manager and we always just like to reiterate, you do not have to have your camera on, you can keep it off, you can chat with us in the chat channel thing over here in Zoom. And we will incorporate that into the flow of the meeting seamlessly as if your camera was on and you were speaking out loud. So yeah, all right, let's go to it. First item, uh, a couple of updates. Uh, actually, I put these on here. Reminder that we do not have an Asia Pacific community meeting this week because there is a holiday going on in China um, and it happens all this week. So <clears throat> the next meeting will be May 18th. And just a reminder, they are bi-weekly meetings and they happen at Wednesday, Wednesdays at 8 a.m. U.S. Central. Is that right? That's right. Yeah, so there's that. Um, of course, anybody's welcome to come to that though. The second one is that the App Ecosystem Working Group is gonna switch, switch it up a little bit. Um, they're moving to Tuesdays at one o'clock, not this week, starting next week. And it will still be a bi-weekly bi schedule. So if you would like to join those, they are also here on this Zoom channel as well. Um, and you will be connecting with people from other open source projects in kind of the Linux ecosystem, um, talking about different metrics, um, actually kind of metrics model-y kind of discussions as well there. So welcome to join that meeting as well. Georg, you wanna say anything else about that since you're really involved in that group? The uh, the App Ecosystem Working Group, um, what we are working on right now is finishing the um, event organizer metrics models. I, I don't know if it's a metrics model. It, we take a different um, approach, or we've been doing this before we started metrics models, so we don't follow the same template. And then the other one is for marketing anyone who is in the community is working on marketing. So those are the two areas that we are currently working on. So excited to get back into it. And just to clarify, those are in regard to open source projects, like how market, like marketing your open source project to users and contributors and things like that. Is that, is that a fair statement, Georg? Yeah, okay. Um, and another difference between that group and the metrics models group that meets um, on Tuesdays for me, Wednesdays for, for China, is that um, the models that, or the metrics that the app ecosystem works on do not necessarily have to be defined by chaos. So they're just kind of some thoughts and collections of here are some ways that we can measure X, Y, Z. Um, but those aren't, don't necessarily, whereas our metric models group, we try to use models that have, or metrics that have already been defined by chaos. Does that make sense to everybody? I hope so. So I don't know if I can say that all again. No. All right. Um, any questions on any of the meeting stuff? There's the minutes for you, Precious. Welcome, welcome. All right, let's um, move along then. ChaosCon updates. Um, reminder to everybody that our CFP closes on May 30th. So if you've not submitted something and you would like to, you still have a little time, but you should probably start working on that. Uh, the second thing I just want to bring up is that we do have our sponsorship prospectus available. So if you are working for a company 
that does sponsorships and you would like to talk to us about sponsoring Chaos Con, we would love that. And this is what we are going to use the money for. So there's that. Questions, comments? All right. And the third one on here is that we're going to correct your grammar, whoever put this in here, to the room. The room is set. And there it is. That would be me. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so, yeah. Um, we have enough room for 40. Is that, that's what it says right there. So, and there's the yeah. top. So, excellent. Yeah. Yeah, so we're all set. So I've been sorry, I was kind of distracted there. Um, there you go. I couldn't, for some reason, I couldn't copy and paste that out of the PDF. So I just put it in as an yeah. image. But um, I don't it's know. Why. It's, I, it's fifty dollars, not five hundred and fifty, right? Um, the the cost of the room. The room is five hundred fifty oh, okay. dollars. All right. We and, and that includes all sorts of stuff. So it's not just the room. It's we. They're going to handle registration for us. Um, we're going to be listed as a co-located event on the website. They're going to provide signage. Um, we get an AV package. We have you know, power strips. Like I'm just kind of looking at the list of things here. Um, ribbons for event attendees on common mm -hmm. on conference badges. So like we kind of get the whole you know, all of that support and $550 uh, is, is really good. Yeah. And that's, that's pretty normal. So yes, then we can set registration to whatever we want. What's it been historically like 10 bucks or did we go higher 50, last time? 50 bucks. Okay. That's what we've been doing. Remind me to do people like I know, so the LF will take care of all of our registration for ChaosCon as a part of the, but do people have to register for OSS Europe? Uh, in the past, I believe so. Okay, that's what I was thinking as well. So. Well, so yeah. is the question whether attendees for ChaosCon need to also register for the main event? Yeah, that was the question. Yeah, but I think we'll probably do what we did uh, for OSSNA, which is to provide a virtual platform for anyone who wants to attend virtually, and that would be free. Does that seem fair and or reasonable and or? Yeah. Do we do we have to go through the registration platform of the Linux Foundation for this? Yes. Okay. Uh, no, not not for the virtual. Oh yeah, not for the virtual. I, I, yeah. I was asking for both, but main, mainly for if if we go for the in-person uh, registration, then uh, it's, it's the, so I remember one of the years before the pandemic that basically everything was filled out by people saying yes, I will attend, but they never came. That's because we didn't charge anything. Yeah, I think by charging we we eliminated that problem. Okay. Okay. Good. And. If the registration fills up, we have, at least in the past, if, if someone is there and they're like, I have the ticket for the main event, can I just sneak in? Usually we have enough seats for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Are you saying we're, we're not checking ticket stubs? Oh. No, no, no. <clears throat> okay. Um, any, any other questions or comments? So for the a uh, lot of noise from yeah, can somebody uh, Kixada's line. Does somebody? Can somebody? Oh, thank you him. so much. For the virtual registration process. Uh, the the last one we did we had no registration whatsoever we just made the event completely open online so any anyone could go to our youtube channel and watch the the live stream that makes I, sense. I thought that worked well 
Yeah, agreed. I have um, one note about this is, uh, would it be possible to use both Open Collective and a YouTube live stream? That <clears throat> I think Garrick just dropped this comment in here, but uh, to know how many people are going uh, virtually, that we could use a, a sign up of some sort. Yeah, the idea behind using something like Open Collective is for anyone who wants to attend the meeting and would appreciate reminders and more support in finding the right place and knowing where to find the Slack so they can also participate in the conversations um, that we have that registration, but it's not required. They can just go to the live stream like before, but they also get additional support and help through emails or whatever we decide to do. I think that's a really great point um, because I think it would be a really nice thing to be able to send something ahead of time the day before, two days before. So here's here's exactly everything you need to join our live stream. Here's where to go. Here's what the schedule is, like all of that stuff. I think because um, though people will maybe maybe they won't. I don't remember now. Will they get that stuff if they're registered for in person? Mm, I don't. I mean, I think they just get the general Linux Foundation stuff. We can ask the Linux Foundation to send something on our behalf. I think that would be nice just to remind people and give them direction. And I don't know. I always feel better when I have everything like right there in front of me that I know where I'm supposed to go and what to expect. Like, especially if it's someone's first time conference and it's the day before the big LF. Like, so there we're like the first thing on the agenda for LF. So it might be nice to just kind of have that welcome. Uh, I can ask Stephanie how she would like to do that. Okay. She's the person I've been talking with at the LF and like if they would do that or if they're not comfortable doing that or if they would like us to do that, I'd totally follow their lead. And Okay, that makes sense. And if we do need to do it, like I can do that. I would I would love to do that. That's no okay. problem at all. So yeah, we just would need the pe people's emails because we don't have access to that, so. And for that reason, I think they, in the past at least, they preferred sending it rather than giving us the email. Nope. Yeah. I'll ask anyway. Uh, real quick, so are we are we officially part of the registration uh, for uh, the Open Source Summit now? Are we in there? I don't know. Okay. I mean, we will be if we're not at the moment. Okay. So on, on the website right now, we just have, we have a coming soon link for registration so gotcha just, just wondering when we can go live with that sure i just i just gave her back the signed form like maybe yesterday so probably okay. i feel like they will also announce that the co-located events are open maybe i don't know maybe they won't but it seems like they should i would think so All right. Um, questions, comments, feedback, anything about ChaosCon? Everybody good for now? Awesome. ChaosCon will be a recurring topic of conversation. So if you think of something to ask, you can either wait or there's a, I think you can ask in general or something like there might be a ChaosCon Slack too. I don't know, but yeah, just ask. We'll answer. All right, um, the next one on the list is a discussion that was happening in the evolution working group. And I will let Kevin and Sean and Vinod is not here. Oh. I'll let you all. I have a question ready. first for Kevin. Does Kevin, does this fall under a website a little bit? Like, should this be part of the website discussion? Because I, I think some of the issues are how newcomers get introduced to these things inside of chaos and where it might be confusing. Uh, I think it's 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 related to the website and the release, I think, because that's the I mean, that's that's how I, I kind of became aware of the issue, just because I have a I have a high level look where I can look across the working groups and I see all of the metrics uh, over and over again. Uh, but it, it probably fits best in the common working group. Would be my guess. 
Okay. Or, uh, um, so I guess let's have the discussion. I would, because I, do you want to introduce the topic or? Uh, no, no, feel free. Go ahead. I mean, what we were talking about in evolution is effectively the history of the metrics and what those are, the metric focus areas and what those are, and then this emergence of metric models. And in some cases, when we look back now with metric models being uh, end user driven way of presenting information, that though that form of organization makes a bit more sense to us than focus areas. And in some cases, we've just looked at evolution as well as at um, just a DEI as examples and really identified at least one focus area in each working group that probably are their metrics models at the end of the day when you put those metrics together. And so I think this discussion arose out of some confusion about what these different terms mean. And I think we'd maybe ask, just ask the question, are others in the community sometimes uncertain, especially newcomers, about what what a metric, a metric model and a focus area are and how they are or not, are not related to each other? To further elaborate, I felt like to me personally, I always felt confused in between focus areas and metric model. Like uh, metric is clear and atomic uh, or discrete that measures something. And metric model is contextualizing it to some uh, context and then using multiple metrics from different uh, areas of where we use it. But how focus area and metric model are different, I'm still confused. So just open for the discussion is what are your thoughts? Are these the same thing? What are the key distinctions between these two areas is what I'm struggling. I mean, I tend to think of focus areas as, um, as categories. So it's just more of a way of grouping similar things together. Whereas I think of metrics models as metrics that you would logically used together to answer some kind of bigger question. I don't know if people agree or disagree with that, but that's that's how I've been thinking of the two. Well, kind of where we landed at the end of the discussion is what are the big objects in evolution? And I think that falls into your, so right now we have issue resolution, code development activity, code development efficiency, and code development process quality. Ultimately what we're talking, but our big objects are commits, issues, change requests, and contributors. Um, and those might make more sense as focus areas as distinct from metric models, because we think some of our focus areas right now probably are ultimately metric models or parts of other metric models. That could be fair. I agree with what Don said. And to your point then, Sean, too, I mean, Common did this, mm -hmm. maybe, I don't know, a year and a half or two years ago. Mm -hmm. if you remember, we reworked all of the focus areas yep. more along these lines. Yeah, we did write better categories because then in the case of common like the it's people contributions time and place like those aren't really metric models in that case mm -hmm. but they're nice ways to categorize yeah. the metrics and I, I think one of the points kevin had in our discussion was that different working groups were using focus areas and in different ways so evolution i agree has a very nice way of labeling them I, when i look at like uh, DEI or value um, or evolution, uh, they aren't they aren't clearly those like big things or categories. Some of them do look like really metric models at the end of the day. I don't know that we're bringing this forward to change anything, but we're bringing it forward as a potential point of confusion for newcomers. And the big the big issue is the big issue is not necessarily what we decide to call these things. It's a lack of consistency across the the, the working group. So the the way that the way that evolution is thinking about it now, maybe maybe that's not the best way to do it. Uh, I, I I like it and I like the way that Common does it as well. Uh, but but maybe that's not the best way to think of it. It's it really is about consistency. And then I would uh, 
I know right now we're, we're mainly focusing on the difference between a focus area and a metrics model, but the issue also extends to what a metric is versus a, a metrics model. And we actually see this quite often because we've, we've moved metrics into, uh, from, from metrics into metrics models uh, in the past. Uh, and in some of the working groups, I, th I think what we're gonna find is that a lot of the metrics that we have are probably more metrics models than uh, than metrics, and I'll I'll call out specifically value because that's the the one I'm looking at for the the review. Uh, the majority of the the metrics in value are probably metrics models, or probably need to be converted to metrics models. Georg has shared the official definitions in the Chaos Handbook. We can see here that metric is not defined and metric model is not defined. So maybe that is some work to Matt Cantu's point that it would be worthwhile to write down and get agreement on what we mean by those. And That's provide what... some guidance. And that's one of the reasons I suggested maybe it was part of the website review is because we're looking at how we're organizing metrics for and metric models for presentation to the to the larger world. And if we're not consistent about how we arrive at those focus area names across working groups, which I don't think we are. Um, then there's a to your point, Kevin, there's a potential confusion. And when we dug in a little bit in our working group, we found we were a little bit confused, like, and it's confused from where we are today, not like we did it wrong, but where we are today with the emergence of metric models being highly useful and a separate way of organizing metrics, the way that we've named work focus areas sometimes ends up feeling more like what is ultimately a metric model or parts of a metric model. And so in, inside evolution, we may move some things around and rename the focus area is to follow the sort of way that common does it, which I think is easier was easier for us to understand than the way it's currently done in I think I don't want to say all, but most of the other working groups. I also think the with this with the name change, I think there's potential that some of these focus areas can actually exist across the working groups. Uh, for example, one of the one of the focus areas that evolution discussed was actually people, uh, which is one that already exists in common. Uh, mm -hmm. And per perhaps this is something to mull over and bring up in the next common meeting because the I was the discussion we had in evolution was uh, 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 it was a difficult discussion I suppose so maybe maybe we we don't need to to dig that far in in, in this meeting maybe we can no. move it to common but well and I, it, I I guess my yeah does it belong in common or does it does this dis, I guess the discussion is naming focus areas really at the end of the day, right? Because what they are is not consistent. Like metrics and metrics are not consistent, but that can be solved in the review process. Um, but I think we, I do think we need to provide some guidance on what a metric is versus what a model is. That way the working groups, when when the working groups are are building metrics, they are, they are yeah. building them the, the correct way, or if they're building models, they're, they're building models the correct way, right? So the- Or at least consistently, the, there's maybe not correct, but there'll be con consistency across the working groups, which I think will make our our metrics and our models more easily consumed. Yeah, that, that's better wording. Yeah, better uh, consistency rather than right, right or wrong. There's no right or wrong way really. But...
Yeah. Georg's point in chat is that the conversation is kind of meta and probably needs to occur in this forum and probably won't be solved today. But maybe we throw the topic out there for working groups to consider today how, how they've named and defined focus areas and how those may or may not be related to what the things that we're now calling working group or um, metric models are and whether or not the, the focus like if we want to adopt I guess the question of whether we want to adopt a consistent like short naming of the things that we're grouping together as focus areas as opposed to some of the more granular naming of focus areas which makes it potentially more difficult to understand i would i would like to point out that the uh and i know you were on i think you were on vacation when this happened uh but there was some uh the it is kind of a it's a it is a meta discussion but that is actually the type of discussion that uh that common uh is handling now so there was uh, the common working group kind of took over some of the kind of the the community wide issues. I don't know, Don. Do you want common to take? Because we could we could make proposals for how to define these things and recommendations. Um, I mean, or, I, I would say if people think it's beneficial to bring it into the common working group, just so we can have some extra time on it. Because I agree, like we're using a lot of people's time for something that's um, not, not going to get resolved in this meeting. Right. So I'm happy to bring it as an agenda item into common if people think that that's uh, the right place for it. I'm also happy if you want to continue these discussions and evolutions since that's where they started um, and bring up maybe bring a proposal back either um, you know to this group or, or somewhere else. I'm not fussed about it either way, but if it, if it would help, we can put it on the agenda for common. Uh, Kevin, maybe maybe. For the next go around here, we try to address this in the evolution working group meeting in two weeks and see if we can propose some kind of definition as part of our work. That way we don't have to bootstrap an entire new working group with a 40 minute discussion. Yeah, that's that's fine with me. And then we can come back to the larger group with a proposal and I don't think it would take terribly long to come up with a proposal that's pretty specific for each working group. There's only n, n of them, five core metric working groups. Awesome. 86. Right. Okay. Thanks everybody for that awesome conversation. And um, we will continue that in the various places that we just discussed. So let's go ahead and move on. We do have a, a few more items on the list. Um, First one here from last week, uh, GitHub's maintainer month. There's a doodle poll here. I'm assuming that was from Ruth. Are you on the call, Ruth? You are there. Yeah, yeah, I am. So um, the doodle poll link to vote when we want to have it done. So that's the link from last week's meeting. Yeah, so we put up a poll link. So we decide when you know, we want to have this done in June. And this is for the actual event. Yeah, the actual event. Planning, everything. Okay. Um, anything else to bring up about this? If you're curious, if you're new here and you're not sure what this is, um, this is what we're proposing, um, that we host a session on burnout and mental health in open source. Um, and that's what we're trying to find a time for. This is our kind of our abstract that we're working on. And I, I think um, Ruth and I'm not sure who else is on that team, but they're also working on kind of an agenda and what itinerary kind of schedule thing that of activities that would be happening during that time. So if you have yeah. thoughts on this or ideas, see Ruth. Any questions, anything else to add for this group? No, nothing. Just uh, then I'll work on the agenda. Let's skip that. And, you know, select the time from the do-do poll. Awesome. Thank you for your work on that. That's fantastic. 
Okay, next one on our list is that uh, just a reminder for those who are participating or want to participate in Google Season of Docs, um, the deadline for submitting your proposal to chaos is tomorrow. So do that today. That'd be great. Tomorrow is today. Tomorrow is today in some places. Probably, maybe. Yeah, I think so. Um, and there is a Season of Docs Slack, which I will also put that here. Oh, Google season of docs. So if you're not in that Slack channel and you'd like to be, you can search for it. Um, join that, ask any questions you have. If you're working on your proposals, that'd be great. Um, next thing is website things. And this was a carryover from last week. So yeah, we absolutely should have had these. Number one on the list, sorry about that, my bad. Uh, who wants to discuss this stuff really quick? Well, not really quick, we have 16 minutes. Oh, yes. I, can, I can be quick. Um, it's just about kind of separating the way that we approach things on the website that we would have a group focused on on branding. Um, and I, I think we kind of have a, a group that's doing that. So things around like our social presence, uh, things that could be used on the website, things that can be used at conferences. So that would be a, a branding group of folks. Uh, and that's naturally related to to website and the work that is going to be happening this um, summer and we were kind of thinking about just with respect to the website how people even on this call use the website so we were trying to identify a couple different things that people might come to the website for so for example you're a new participant or a new contributor and you end up at chaos.community and you want to go from there um, you're somebody who needs uh, just information. So you're not looking to, that second one is you're not necessarily looking to participate, but you just want to get access to say metric definitions or metric models, or you want to apply for badging, like event badging kind of thing. Uh, and the third would be for existing community members. So if you have been in the chaos project for a while, do you go to the website? And if you do, what do you, what do you go there for? So I'm just kind of curious as to to folks on this call, like how you use the website and how you might, you know, kind of identify yourself as one of these individuals or or somebody not on this list, and you come at it kind of a different way. So anybody, anybody can speak. Anybody can speak. So for example, I use the website. Occasionally, I, I end up at the participate page. So I'm oftentimes looking at um, at the calendar and when things are. And I would consider myself to be an existing community member. So that's a, a site that I a page that I end up on quite a bit. Yeah, I I think I don't use the website. I only used it for the few times I uh, joined the community. Uh, and I think I didn't find what I wanted until Elizabeth guided me with a lot of links, which later again led me to the website that I had first abandoned. So <laughs> this was a funny experience. Maybe because um what I wanted wasn't near there or um scraping through it was a little bit hard so what were after you i understood a lot of things pardon oh i was just gonna ask what were you looking for that wasn't there um i i, I wanted to just um by the time i joined i was so so ignorant about the community what it does but when i went to the website at first i had even mistaken it for health like bio bioinformatics things when, when when I read about health, the word health. So it it wasn't just making sense because I was seeing health, community health, but again, I wasn't seeing anything related to the health I was thinking. So, and looked like everything was so far from my reach, but since I had people to ask, they again sent me links that were taking me back to the website. So I think um, the first information I needed was very deep inside the website. I think, Enoch, you were also looking for some things that we ended up finding in the community handbook, but because it wasn't searchable from the website, it didn't, like the yeah. results that came up on some of those terms were like wacky, weird, 
old blog posts or like random things that didn't really apply. So I think that was. Yeah, sure. And, and there is a way the blog posts are maybe automatically updated, I'm not sure, but there's some of those things that come up on the landing page. Yeah, but that's it. For now, I don't visit it. I even don't know the last time I did because maybe I know where to find every other thing. So <laughs> it's been long. Ruth, did you have a comment? I saw your hand up. You're muted. Yeah, so um, I use it. I use the metrics part, like go to the metrics page, check out like existing metrics. I was trying to add that there. Um, and then also when I get asked questions during, uh, when I tell people about chaos and then I want to be sure I'm correct. <laughs> I go to the about page to confirm, you know, and, and let them see the website for themselves. Like, it's like I share my screen and show them things there myself. You get so, yeah. So that's how I use the website. Thanks. Somebody yeah, capturing the chat. Sorry. I did. It's okay. Yeah below if you scroll down elizabeth yeah I, I, I want to say that honestly i don't think um the landing page gives um is so brute uh in a way that uh, um it just opens to you chaos working groups chaos software and chaos initiatives and like it doesn't really walk you through um, the only thing that explains what they do is the the header the, the, the image that um that is up there the carousel that's up there that says community health analytics open source software and some other two lines then they take you deep into chaos working groups so i just don't think it would be the right landing page for someone who doesn't know anything about chaos but maybe for Ruth now since she knows what this is she can easily navigate with whoever she wants to show what she wants to really show that's why it's easy for her I think that's that's a fair critique. The landing page is not great for new users or or new new contributors. So that's that's one of the main reasons we're doing the redesign. Uh, this is really helpful. Thank you, everybody. Like the most productive meeting I think we've ever had ever for sure the best uh, best olympics ever <laughs> elizabeth it says that every meeting i know yeah. I, do. Yeah. I do we just keep getting better and better that's that's why because we're, we're just iterating on ourselves which there's is a good. song there's a song we could write about that <laughs> i have to admit it's getting better something along those lines yep that's right all right um matt g anything else that you want to ask of people before we move on no, that was really helpful again. Thank you so much. I would uh, I would like to continue this meeting in the web content or continue this discussion in the uh, web content meetings. Uh, and you're all, of course, invited to attend those. And you'll notice that there is a agenda item for that. Do we want to just set a time and day today right now for that? What works for you, Kevin? Not to put you on spot. Uh, I I like so most of our meetings are within the uh, within that same time range. So the uh, the nine to ten uh, or ten to eleven time range in uh, U.S. Central Time. Uh, I I kind of like sticking to that. Uh, it, it seems to be the that nine to ten range seems to be one of the more inclusive times. I know it doesn't work for everyone. Uh, but it does work for a, a pretty large proportion of our community. So I'm looking right where that cursor is right there. Right here? So like either, yeah. Thursday, Thursday, so we could do it right before common. Yeah. Yeah. But not on the two. So, well, there'll be two here. Oh, yeah, we, don't want, <clears throat> we don't want three. <clears throat> two is enough. Yeah. So every two yeah. weeks right before yep. common. Yep. Yeah. I'll yeah, miss the first one, but I'll be there for the next one. 
that work for you, Kevin? Yeah, that works for me. Right on. Yeah, so this will be updated on the participate page here because I have the calendar added. So yeah. There we go. Action done. Set. So, and just to be clear, the uh, the main purpose of the web content meeting is going to be designing the new website. So. Don't come with different expectations, I think, is the message. All right. We've done six minutes. So let's talk about this. Practical example, link to relays metrics. Does anyone remember who put this on here? It was from last week. Yeah, I, I put this on this uh, and the idea was like, we have released so many metrics and when whenever we see a practical example that we feel should be uh, linked to what we have released so that other newcomers or who want to use the metric can see some ideas. I know in the original metric, we have that example, but once it is released, we don't have a feedback loop cycle. So sometimes, or maybe uh, this idea came when I saw the uh, uh, contributor burnout uh, tweet and I was feeling like, oh, we have the exact metric and this is a classical example of that, that I want to link so that if somebody wants to see the burnout metric and can see a practical example, how it's being portrayed can link to this, but there was no way I can link those ideas or back to the metric. So this is where I generated this proposal as a practical link somewhere uh, on a website or maybe on a GitHub or someplace so that we can link them in future if somebody have an example for that. My one hesitation with that, Vinod, is it's maintaining links to external places is from what I hear you saying. Yep. And that like even going through the references of the existing metrics that have been released, a lot of those <laughs> yeah. Really in 404s it's just one more thing to maintain being well, said i think it's a great idea yeah so so yeah i think it's okay go ahead please have uh, on our website this page um media news coverage of chaos i haven't really seen anything come across um in the last five months so that's why there's nothing for 2022 yet and if there are blog posts whatnot feel free to send them my way um, but maybe when you see something like this we can have a list of chaos being used not tied to specific metrics where we need to update it but just like a loose list like this one we don't have to update when links break we can just say it worked on this date and then when it's broken it's broken but we still capture hey we've seen chaos metrics in the wild yeah and even the maybe if the links are broken internet archive can be used to track out those broken links at back in point in time which i've used in the past a couple of times so alternately we could just make a short blog post as well to say hey hey check out this metric being used in the wild and, and link to it uh and that that blog post would automatic the blog post would be saved as a record on the site and then it would also uh populate a tweet so if the purpose is to get people to read the article Okay, so let's think about that. And maybe we can bring this up at the, <laughs> I love that meme. I use that meme all the time. I don't care if it's 20 years old now. I don't care. I will use it till the day I die. Um, I love it. Whoever put that in there, thank you. That makes me happy. Um, 
should we continue this at the web content meeting that's happening every other Thursday starting May 12th? Seems like a good spot. Yeah. For sure. All right, let's do that. We have two minutes. I don't know if we can get this in, but let's try. Should Because I skipped over it. I didn't mean to. Uh, should GSOC and GSOD, is that how you say that? Mentees work together on knowledge-based and community handbook. Ruth, I'm guessing you put that in there. Yeah, from our discussion on like the office asked the so kind of like since GSOD for the community handbook project is going to be on the website, so would the mentees work together with GSOC and you know GSOD, will they have like some sort of collaboration? I think it's a good idea to have a cross channel. That's something that they can ask questions of each other, what's going on in their world kind of thing. Uh, and see, and see um, share information that way. Mm -hmm. I feel like we'll know more to this question in like two or three weeks. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, my, my immediate answer is yes, but I don't know what that would look like yet. Uh, I, I don't think they can do the work without having some sort of coordination. But we haven't accepted anybody yet for those. So. Fair. <laughs> Perfect. I'm going to delete my comments because I was, uh, yeah, there we go. All right, we did it. Everybody can take the rest of the day off or the rest of the week. Why not? Right. All right. Check. <laughs> oh, we're awesome. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. And um, yeah, great. Great to see everybody. Good to see, see everyone. Bye. 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 B